News with Hannah Tallett. Top stories on Sky World News. The FBI has charged three students with helping one of the suspects behind last month's bombings at the Boston Marathon. North Korea has sentenced an American citizen to 15 years of hard labor for trying to overthrow the government. And the president of Somalia has told Sky News that although the Islamist al-Shabaab militant group has been defeated, it is still capable of mounting attacks both in his country and abroad. Let's get more now on the 15-year hard labor sentence handed down to a U.S. citizen in North Korea. The state-run news agency says Kenneth Bay committed hostile acts against the state. Well, I'm joined now by Dr. Robert Kelly, a professor of international relations at Busan National University in South Korea. Dr. Kelly, thanks very much for speaking to us on Sky World News. Uh, what more can you tell us about Kenneth Bay's case? Well, he was a tour operator. Um, tour operators who operate int into North Korea do so usually out of China. Um, and sometimes they have gotten themselves involved in the various human rights campaigns and other NGOs that operate in North Korea. That stuff is semi-legal. And it looks like Mr. Bay took some photographs that the North Koreans didn't like. The North Koreans, I've been to North Korea. And the North Korean tour guides do actually check your camera. They do check your photographs and stuff like that to make sure that you don't take photographs of things they don't want. And you are... You do sign a piece of paper saying they're allowed to do that. So if he violated that rule, I suppose there are grounds to arrest him. The timing of this is quite interesting as well, isn't it? Do you think it's an attempt by Pyongyang to place itself back in the spotlight globally and, and potentially to push America's buttons? Yes, I think that's correct. Mr. Bay was arrested, I believe, about six months ago. The North Koreans have done this before, right? They sort of capture American missionaries who wander in or human rights campaigners who wander in. And rather than sort of come to some kind of deal for their release or some kind of arrangement, they hold on to them for a while and use them as bargaining chips. Um, it is a way for North Korea, as you said, to capture the spotlight, to get a tour or a visit from someone like Bill Clinton or, you know, Dennis Rodman or something like that. And all this is important for North Korea because much of the world dislikes North Korea, looks down on it, thinks it's sort of backward and the rest of it. And so here's a high profile moment for it to capture the spotlight, like you say. And as if tensions weren't really high, uh, running high enough already, it'll be interesting to see how Washington responds to this. America tends to be quite quick to act where one of its own citizens is at stake. Yeah, sure. I would imagine that the United States is probably working behind the scenes on this pretty quickly. Um, this has happened, again, this has happened before. What usually happens is there's some kind of informal deal behind the scenes. We don't always know about all the details. Bill Clinton, for example, has come and fished out Americans who've been sort of caught up in North Korea. Um, Governor Bill Richardson has done this before. My guess is you'll see some kind of high profile meeting or event or tour by someone from the United States. And along the way, the North Koreans will tell this person, here are the things that we want from this current crisis. They're using this as a part of the crisis. This isn't about justice or anything like that. It's about the crisis. Dr. Robert Kelly, live for us there from South Korea. Many thanks.